Hi, it's Robin. And I got a quick second channel thing here for you. This just arrived in the mail today. Trick Shoot 10. Are you up to the Happle Games Challenge? There's my friend Jim Happel, who made this game. He's been on my channel before about his stupid Commodore pet tricks. Now, while he made this game, he did not make this packaging. He certainly didn't choose this photo of him. It's our mutual friend David Yaud who did this as a surprise. So don't take this too seriously. It's meant as a joke and a, a fun gift between friends. But it's neat enough that I thought I'd show it here on the second channel. So let's take a look at the box here. Really nicely done all around. I remember years ago I wanted to make a boxed version of one of my Commerce 64 games and it was going to cost a fortune to get boxes made back then. Nobody believes me, but it was going to be like I would have to buy like a hundred of them and they're going to be like 10 bucks each. The All the all the places I found wanted like a thousand dollars minimum for the order. And I tried to tell people that nobody believed me, but that time... <laughs> That was in the before print-on-demand sort of days. Anyway, apparently nowadays there's all kinds of solutions for print-on-demand boxes. So maybe I'll look into it in the future for my own project. Trick Shot 10 Trick Shooting Contest. Raise the ball to the right height, drop it on the ramp, and bounce it into the basket. As you make more and more shots, the baskets get smaller and appear at more random locations. How many trick shots can you make in a row? Increasing difficulty with every shot, true parabolic calculations, beautiful Petsky graphics, unique game sounds for ball movement, scores, and end of game, displays both the current score and the high score for ages 6 through adult, one player. Believe it or not, that is actual Commodore 64 gameplay. 2021 Happel Games, Inc. So if that looks underwhelming to you, it's because this game was actually an entry in a 10-line basic program competition. So I'll put a link in the video description to this website. For several years now, it looks like since 2015 through to this year, 2021, this competition has happened, and there's been more and more entries every year. This year there was, I don't know, is there 100 and... Anyway, I think somebody told me there's like 144 entries or maybe even more. And they have these different categories like PUR80, Pure 80, and that means that your basic game needs to be a maximum of 10 lines, each of them a maximum of 80 characters, so they can be entered into the basic interpreter. And there's also a pure 120 competition, probably for computers that have a longer line length. The C64, for example, only has an 80 character limit. A wild category. Anyway, I don't know what all these are. There's the Extreme 256. I believe that's if you use tools, if you write your basic program using some tools to make extra long lines of code, it's still, the computer's still capable of running it, but you wouldn't normally be able to actually edit that kind of program on your computer. This is a neat competition. I encourage you to check it out. Maybe I'll make a video about more of these games. I don't know. So Jim's game, Trick Shoot 10, tied at number 22 in the Pure 80 competition out of 66 entries in total. So he placed in the upper one third and they range on platforms from pretty amazingly the Auric one first place. I have an Auric, but I haven't even tried it yet. C64, BBC, Atari, ZX81, Spectrum, Aquarius. Oh, the pet version of Trick Shoot 10 took 15th place. That's cool. Okay, so check that out if you're interested. Back to this game. Let's open up the box. That is so cool that you can get such a professional looking box made. And here we go. There's an instruction sheet. <laughs> okay. And inside, here is a cartridge. And it looks like it's 3D printed. Commodore 64. Nice Commodore symbol on the back. So I assume this is a, from a 3D library. Single screw in the back, that's typical. And it's got the regular circuit board. 
and that fantastic cover art on it. And it even has this nice cardboard insert. Look at this. <laughs> Action figures. These are the stars of the game here. The Petski Circle and the Petski Triangle. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and to look at this instruction sheet, here we go. Trick Shoot 10, 2021 Apple Games, available for the C64 and the Commodore Pet 2001. Trick Shooting Contest, raise the ball to the right height, drop it on the ramp, and bounce into the basket. As you make more and more shots, the baskets get smaller and appear at more random locations. How many trick shots can you make in a row? C64 instructions. <laughs> it's just like the instructions of old. Turn off your C64 before inserting or removing any cartridge. Insert the cartridge with the label side up. And turn on the C64 and get ready to shoot. Okay, and the gameplay. Hold the space bar down until the desired ball height is reached, then let go. Watch as the ball drops onto the ramp and bounces toward the basket. After scoring, tap the space bar to start the next round. Your current score is shown at the top center of the screen, while the high score is displayed at the top left. To start a new game, press the space bar. Scored 25 or more? Send an SASE with a picture of your screen, too. I covered up that address. I don't think uh, I should be showing all of YouTube that address. Game Design Programming by Jim Happel and the sound, of course. Okay. Oh, and a nice warning there. Sporadic jerky movements of arms or legs, muscle stiffness or eye twitching. And a limitation of liability. I guess that's all for real. Did he hide a joke in there? I don't see it. This is like a nice reference to, for example, the Activision games, where if you could score usually 20,000 points and you write them with a photo of your achievement and they would send you a patch or like a badge. So this is nice. I'm going to see if I can get 25. So really, it's amazing what you can do between the, the box and, you know, the cartridge. Not sure where he got the circuit boards made. Check the video description or the comments, somebody... I'm sure David will tell us. It's amazing what people can do nowadays. All right, I got my 64C set up. I'm going to try the game now. Here we go, power up. <laughs> cool. Okay, so like we saw... Oh, we need those action figures out. Okay, so it just says press space bar. Score. There we got one. So I think the longer you hold down the space bar, yep, the further it goes in. I see what it was saying about a parabola there. So I think the longer you hold down space bar, the further the ball goes up. And then of course when it hits that triangle, it launches further. Ooh, almost too far. Three. Four. I like those sound effects. Five. Come on. Yep. That was pretty easy so far, Jim. Oh, this one's lower. Come on. Oh. Yep. Seven. I'm going to get my uh, my free whatever it is at 25, no problem. Eight. Oh, this is a bit further. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Oops. Okay. So my high score of eight. So what happens if you hold on a really long time? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, even that's still scored. <laughs> that was funny that it doesn't like fault if you hold on too long. It just wibbles at the top there. Oh, well, that one went even further. Okay. And what happens if you just tap really quick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, nice job, Jim. 
That seems like a fun game, and I bet it is challenging to get 25. So if I hit stop, yes, okay. So it is a basic program. Let's list that. Woo, it's more than a full screen. Let's take a quick look at it here. Oh yeah, quick, eh? 10 lines of code, that won't take long. Look how dense they are though. This is the thing about these basic game competitions. It's a real challenge. How much can you cram in? And if he, if Jim's game only took 20 second place, just imagine that people thought 21 of the games or 20, whatever, 20 games were better than this. Just imagine how that functionality got crammed in there. So same variables, R equals 53280. That's the border color. Poker. Yeah, poke R was six. So same color M. That's a SID register, I think. So saying the sound L equals, it's got an equation here. I don't even think S is being defined yet. So maybe the program loops back here. X and Y, C, if B is less than S, then B equals S. Okay. Sets the screen to white and clears it. Some tabs, go sub eight, get a, some random numbers. Here's a loop. So what is this eight? Poke, 10 to, okay, so this is like a general purpose poke to the screen routine. Set the parameters. So this term eight on, and it returns at the end. Okay, so this is a generic plot kind of routine to plot to the screen. If, oh, those blanks. I wonder what that trick is about. Hey, Jim, maybe you'll explain some of this. So you're making a video. Jim, Jim's got his own uh, YouTube channel, by the way. He doesn't make a lot of videos, but when he does, they're awesome. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, X and Y on sign. Oh, so I guess this is the parabola plotting here. On the absolute value. This might be like collision detection here. And then it prints the score. Go to six, otherwise go to five. And then here it updates the score. If you get a successful hit. And what's line seven? Yeah, and line seven's the game over case. So this seems to be the main game loop while it processes your shot and plots on the screen. And then either you score a point and your score goes up and then it goes back to the beginning of the program or otherwise it does a little game over routine here. Pretty cool. So you see how quickly, when you only have 10 lines of code, how quickly they get used up, especially in Commodore Basic. And so one of the tricks is just packing as much information as you can into one line. Rather than using if thens, one real trick is using this on, this on go to because it doesn't cause the line to end. You can get multiple. It's kind of like an if then. If you can create a mathematical formula that will return a zero, a one, a two, a three, you can go to multiple locations. In fact, even if you don't have multiple branches. You can still use on because it will allow you to do a go to and then still process another command after, like another go to. Normally, when you do an if, if it's false, then it falls through the next line and doesn't process anything else on that line. So, this on, on go to is an excellent way of overcoming that limitation. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know. What all that space is about. Okay, and one last thing is that running a basic program from cartridge actually isn't all that easy. It's like not trivial. Normally you would only put machine language programs on a cartridge. So David had to do a bit of trickery to get the basic program to boot from the cartridge. So he sent me the source code for that 
It's not in my favorite Turbo Macro Pro assembler, but I'll forgive him for that. So we'll just go look at it over on my Mac in a text editor. Okay, and just to look over David Yaud's solution for getting a basic program into a cartridge that will auto boot and run. So he's done this, it looks like in CBM PRG Studio, which is a Windows integrated IDE and like assembler. Seems like a neat program. Uh, up at the top here, he's got the origin to 8000 hex, which is where a cartridge is normally located in memory. Uh, you can also place them up at, uh, what, at E1000. Okay, and he gives the instructions on how to build. First you assemble, then you use this cart convert program. And this is one of the utilities built into Vice. Vice actually ships with a number of super useful command line tools that a lot of people don't know about. They're like hidden in there, but they are in the documentation. And this one will create a cartridge file. And then you can make like a booting cartridge that will work in Vice. Uh, or that you can transfer over to real hardware, like an easy flash. It's a really great tool. Okay, the 8 kilobyte cartridge runs from 8000 hex to 9FFF, and that's what a lot of the early Commodore 64 game cartridges were. You can also make a 16K cart, but that also uses the basic ROM area, so let's avoid that. Yeah, because this is a basic program, it needs the ROM switched in. The cartridge ROM headers... Okay, so cold start and the warm start vectors. I think that just does a kernel reset there. And th these are the bytes that you need to put in. Well, not the... <laughs> this line are a series of magic bytes that spell CBM80 that the C64 kernel looks for to detect if there's a cartridge that should auto start. And I guess David decided to put a few extra bytes of his own there as a special message for us. And the run command is R, Shift, U, and the carriage return. And I think he's going to use that later. Okay, then he's got the label Happel stuff, include bin. This is the actual basic, C64 basic program that gets embedded into the cartridge binary. It's not going to get run directly from here, but of course it needs to be in the cartridge. And that's what he's doing here. And then he's figuring out the size of the basic program by taking the end of the binary. So this way, even if Jim updated his binary, it got a little shorter, a little longer, this would automatically calculate it if you reassembled. And then he's got to figure out the end of basic as well. I think he's got to tell basic. Probably needs to calculate that for some reason. So again, this is a solution to a problem, how to get the basic code running from cartridge. And this isn't necessarily the best solution. I don't know what the best solution is. Uh, this is what David came up with and he was kind enough to share it with us. So the kernel setup, set the interrupt disable, store X, Turn on Vic for PAL NTSC check. Okay. Uh, initialize CIA chip. So he's doing a bunch of kernel calls here. I've done some of this before. You just call these kernel routines and it resets things. This is good if you're writing a program. Oh, my game Frogs and Flies uh, messed up the C64 configuration completely. But then when Lodestar was going to publish it, they insist every game exits cleanly to back to basic or back to the load star booter. So I had to figure some of this out. Now, mind you, this was 24 years ago. I, I don't know if I've worried about it since. Okay. So relocate basic code. He's taking the start and end of Jim's basic code and storing it in the zero page locations, probably for a copy end of destination. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here, Actually, I was just looking for this the other day and I didn't find it. So there's a routine in the basic ROM that if you set these zero page locations correctly, you can then jump to the subroutine and it will do a copy for you. 
So this is rather than, you know, coding your own copy loop. But anyway, it's nice to use a built-in routine. Okay, so that's a handy one. Now, shove a basic run command into the keyboard bifer as if typed. Yeah, and this is uh, kind of a common technique. So he's just taking that R, R shift U carriage return up here and byte by byte stuffing it into the buffer. And if there are three, then he's done. And otherwise store X. So yeah, this tells the kernel that if you put like a three in there, that there are three keys, key presses to process. And this is kind of commonly done. Like I, I've seen other basic programs type load commands in this way, or yeah, run is very common. Now onto the basic boot. Okay, so the thing is right now, basic hasn't booted yet. He's done all this configuration, copy the basic program down, type the run command in, initialize the basic vector tables, initialize basic RAM, print the startup message. Okay, that's cool. Oh, but what this does is actually deletes the program. So <laughs> because you've reset all of basic, then he does the old routine undelete, which he got from lemon 64 rebuild basic line chaining load a with 22. Okay. And so this sets the basic variables back again, and this causes the basic program in memory to get reinitialized, rechained, where the links are all set up again. And basic is fully aware that there really is a basic program there in memory. And then finally it drops into this drops into the remainder of basic boot. And then the run command is waiting there for it and it starts. And here we are at the end. Presumably he put this here just with a break command so that the assembler would generate a file that's exactly 8k by going to the end of the memory space and putting a single opcode. Then when you're assembling it, the assembler has to fill in zeros or whatever, so that your object code, your binary is exactly 8k, the same size as the ROM is going to be. Of course, you could do that with another tool, but this is letting the assembler do it. So you don't have to go pad it up with another command. Okay, so that is, seems like a lot of work, eh? So again, great job, David. Great job, Jim. Thanks for sharing this. And if anybody knows a better solution to doing this booting basic from a cartridge, let us know. I think we'd all like to learn, but uh, this has been instructive. Again, this is the second channel. Those of you who've hung around, the idea here is for me to be able to make not necessarily shorter videos, but to be able to make videos in a shorter time. I will do little to no research, little to no prep. I'll just give you my honest reactions to something that I want to show you that I'm excited about, something new I got or something I discovered. That's what this channel is about. My other videos, it may not look like it, but sometimes I, I prepare for days ahead of time, getting everything into my head and writing, sometimes writing scripts or just, uh, getting everything crammed into my brain so that I can be kind of <laughs> seemingly expert at something. Uh, but I have a lot of things where I just want to show the, show it while I'm excited about it. That's what this second channel is for. So thank you for those of you who have subscribed. Uh, if you don't like this sort of thing, then, you know, just stick with my main channel. That's fine. Yeah. So again, thanks to my patrons. Thanks to David for sending this cartridge, Jim for making the game, uh, David for making the cartridge. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.
Walt, you 